salty dog. Candy me, salty dog. Candy me, salty dog. Well, if you won't be my candy man, I won't be your salty dog. Welcome to the next episode of Junk Food on the Road. I do not remember what episode this is because we have vacation brain. So today we are talking about India, where we have just left. I'll put it, I'll dub in what number it is. Thank you. Later. So it'll sound like, welcome to episode four. I'm sorry, I'm eating fresh grapes because we are no longer in India, but we are still not home. No. That's for another episode. Well, we can say where we are. We are in Dubai. We're in Dubai. We're going to do that later because this wasn't really an official visit no. to Dubai. It's just kind of a stopover. So. Anyway, India. India. What's the first thing you have to say about India? First thing I have to say about India. Um, I got sick twice. Only? Well, we were there for 13 days. Got sick twice. I I don't think my stomach was 100% any of the time. I had a couple of moments where it was okay. But, uh, but you know, I mean, yeah, I guess you expect that in India. And so it happened. As far as good food goes, I mean, I'm trying to think. Like, there was some good... Paneer is good. The paneer is excellent there. Which is cheese. They call it cottage cheese, but it's not. It's, like, it's sort of like a cross between cottage cheese and... Uh, Tofu. Tofu kind of texture. So um, there is no beef. That's that's something worth noting. Yeah. Which, is which kind makes of, McDonald's a nightmare. Which, uh, well, why don't we start and talk about your nightmarish McDonald's? Because that's junk food for sure. That was the most disgusting burger I've ever had in my whole life. It was a chicken tikka burger, right? It was the chicken masala burger. Masala, okay. The chicken was like... The burger itself was bright orange. There was a sauce. Well, no, like it wasn't. No, no, like they, they coated it. Don't they coated. They coated it as well. Yeah. But you bit into this chicken. It 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 wasn't like ground chicken. Like there was no texture to it. It was like mashed and formed. And you know, like the color of tandoori chicken, which is that lovely red coating that you get on chicken, and then you take, you know, you you pull off a piece of chicken, and it's like chicken colored underneath with this lovely tandoori spice on it. This was like that color, but it was sort of blended in all the way through the entire mass chicken burger. I can't call it ground chicken because there was no ground texture. You insult the ground everywhere? Yeah, it was just bleh. It was like uniform bleh. And then they smothered it in this like... It's like a French dressing almost. But it, but it was diarrhea colored and this consistency of like a really, really bad bout of food poisoning. Yeah. Yeah. I but definitely for sure. fresh fruits and vegetables you can't eat there. Mangoes. Mangoes. But you peel them. Yeah, if you can peel them. We, we you, basically lived on... You peel it or cook it or you don't eat it at all. Mangoes and... and I, well, getting back the to that bananas. burger. Hmm. Getting back to that burger before. There was also onions on it, wasn't there? Yeah, there might have been onions on it. Because they put onions on everything. Onion is the staple in the Indian subcontinent. And not cooked. They love raw onions. Mm-hmm. They say... At least in Pakistan, we'll talk about Pakistan some other time, but that if you eat raw onions in summer, it will help you stay cool from the heat, from the extreme heat. That sounds like the biggest lie I've ever heard. That's like drinking a, co- a cold drink in the winter to keep you warm. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. That's what they say anyway. But but uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of, if you don't like onions, I'm not a big fan of onions, so. Well, there's a lot of raw onions. Yeah, I'm not a big I fan. I don't know of- if that's just a summer thing. Or if they do that all year round. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, it's funny because we're painting a really bad picture of India right now. We the, had an awesome time. The food was great. Um, the, if you're going to do anything food-wise in, in, in India as far as, like, meals go, I'm going to I'm gonna say go for butter chicken. Yeah. Like, definitely go for the curries. Don't go for the Western food. But butter chicken to us was sort of a theme for this particular trip. Mm-hmm. We tried butter chicken in, in like, the nice restaurants, the... The great restaurants, and we got to try butter chicken in the place where it was notionally invented, which is Moti Mahal in Delhi. Yes. Right near the Red Fort. Yeah, not far from the Red Fort. Because apparently there's a bunch of places called Moti Mahal. Moti Mahal Deluxe, okay. which was started by the grandson of the guy who opened the original Moti Mahal. Yes. But it's not the same restaurant. No. He was just trading on his grandfather's name. But it, it, the butter chicken there was good. It's... It, the one thing about butter chicken is it's actually different every time you get it. Yeah. 
then there's like various consistencies and flavors and you can in north india i think it's different in north india and south india in oh. north india generally the chicken has the bone in it and in south india it generally there it's boneless so i hear we didn't go to south india but we did order it boneless a couple of times the funny thing is, I mean, most of the places, most of the places, not all of them, most of the places had the option of bone or no bone. Mm. You know, I would say maybe 30% of them had the option. One of the difficulties is we went to the places, as I said, that, that originated it, and they unfortunately offer both. Yeah. So it's not like you can say, I want it the way it was original, because they have both. Well, we could have asked them, say, how was it done at first? Yeah, I guess so. But we really wanted boneless. And they did it interesting, because rather than big chunks of chicken, they did it almost like a pulled pork type consistency a pulled chicken a pulled chicken it was like pulled apart and so every bit really the sauce was all over it was great it was pretty yummy the best though yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm debating though I, I still think maybe the best might have been that place in uh, was it Shimla there was one place where it had a really nice consistency was that that little shack yes it was there was a little shack in Shimla near the Gordon Castle or Gordon yeah. Fort or whatever it's just it's a little little if you if you end up there if you're it, listening it to this it looks disgusting yeah, but it's like probably the worst looking restaurant in that area but the butter chicken was fantastic yeah All we got something else there too and it was really good I think it was just tandoori chicken Yes, we did. We got tandoori chicken and we got um, butter chicken. And another, the butter chicken was good. Another sketchy place where we got butter chicken was by the bus station in um, Jaipur. Yep. It was a little daba, which is sort of, I, I think guess, it was a bus station. It looked like yeah, a Yeah, it looked station. like a bus station. But it's a daba, which is basically a, a small restaurant. And most of the restaurant was outside. The, the kitchen was outside, but the seating was inside. Yeah, it was great. And we went to this place and the butter chicken was okay. But they had this other thing called Maharaja chicken. Chicken Maharaja. Chicken Maharaja. It was so good. It was delicious. It was sort of like butter chicken, but kind of got a bit of a cinnamony flavor. Oh, it, was, it was wonderful. So that's, I mean, the one piece of advice I would say, I mean, avoid fast food places. Because we also went to a pizza hut and that was just <laughs> utterly horrible. The, the sauce was like... A creamy... Man, it was like creamy, Thousand Islands. Yeah, it was like Thousand Islands. It was like Thousand Islands. Like the sauce. And the, the cheese was like cheese whiz. Yeah, it was gross. It was like Velveeta. Yeah. Like melted Velveeta on your pizza. It was disgusting. So I. It, it didn't taste terrible, but it's just not what you would expect from Pizza Hut. Yeah. Yeah, you're kind of hoping for consistency, and no. But we, we had a lot of luck with just finding like little places. If you're a vegetarian, you're in luck because there's lots of options. If you dip, if you want meat, if you're a bit of a carnivore, you ha- kind of have to poke around. Uh, places like we went to near the Golden Temple, there's actually some temples, I think, within a certain radius, you're not going to find meat. Yeah, we found we found butter chicken in that little sort of off the beaten track. Yeah. Yeah, we found butter chicken in a little, like, just sort of tiny little hole in the wall. And it was pretty good. Yeah. But the Shimla and the Delhi butter chicken were definitely the best. And if you go happen to find this little place near the Golden Temple, avoid the pickled onions. <laughs> yeah, don't eat the pickled. That would be my first they're, problem. They're not actually pickled. They're just raw in some sort of hot sauce. And they make might make you sick. Yeah, I'm not claiming anything. I'm not going to take any legal action or anything. But that was the only thing you ate that I didn't. But that was the only thing I ate, and that was the night I was on the floor sweating in the bathroom. Hmm. So. But uh, I, I'm trying to think snack-wise if there was anything. Dharamshala. Dharamshala? What was in Dharamshala? Momos. Momos. Oh my goodness. Tibetan food. I have a new love. I love Tibetan food. Why Tibetan food isn't everywhere, I don't know. There's, their soups are amazing. Momos are like the greatest thing in the world. You can get them fried or boiled. Steamed. Steamed, whatever. They're like little dumplings filled with goodness. I think these uh, Tibetan food, sh- uh, there should be Tibetan food everywhere in the world. That's There's some in Toronto. Apparently. I don't know. We, we're... Last time I was there, it was still there, but that was a long time ago. And I've heard stories from people that it might be gone. So, no. if you have in New York as well, if you have a chance to try Tibetan food, do it. If you're a Tibetan person and you're a good cook and you're thinking of opening up restaurants, I live in Ottawa sometimes. Uh, I visit Toronto often. I will give you as much business as I possibly can. There, um, the nice thing about Dharamshala, or more specifically McLeod Ganj, where we were, yes. is that um, that is where His Holiness the Dalai Lama actually lives. Yes, it's sort of like it's sort of like a Tibet too. Yeah, it's where the government in exile is as well. And a lot of people. And the main temple. Yeah. And it's it's got a very um, big Tibetan population. It's a cool place to live. I mean, it's actually cool, and it's cooler, but it's it's a fun place to live. Yeah. 
So there was uh, there was some good food there. Junk food, I wouldn't call any of that junk because it was really good. But that one place had good cakes. Yeah. The clay oven. Yeah, it was a place sort of near the main square in McLeod Gange. That was really cool. The cakes and, and, and it was well adjusted for the high altitude. Yeah, which you know you don't think about this, but baking at a high altitude has got to be an interesting challenge because all of your recipes have to be adjusted for it. And your baking temperatures and everything. Yeah, yeah. That's that's they got a, it's fascinating. I, we had a discussion with the woman cooking them. And she said she had to adjust a bit. And it was quite mm-hmm. quite interesting. But you know, junk food. I mean, junk food in India, as far as like candy goes, um, there's a lot of more chocolate than I would expect for such a hot climate. Um, but they do keep it refrigerated, as in most places you'd expect. A lot of like spicy chips and crunchy things. And then, of course, one of the interesting things. I don't know if this is junk food, but sort of an after-dinner mint thing is you often get the little uh, seeds. The little caraway seeds. Caraway seeds. Or, seeds. And a bit of sugar mixed in. Mm. It's funny, in North America, you get the sort of candy-coated caraway seeds in Indian restaurants, and you get regular caraway seeds. But I don't think I've seen a little crystal sugar in that as much. Do you know what we didn't have at all when we were in India, which I used to eat a lot of um, when I would shop in the Indian areas in various cities, is sev, the, the chickpea snacks. I have a bag of them right there. Well, we didn't need any in India. We did not. I have a bag that will be reviewed for Candy Critic later. Okay. But I, you're, it is absolutely right. We didn't really. Oh no. Didn't really although I might have eaten some in that market when that guy gave me something that kind of was. Pulled sevy. off that sort of stringy, not stringy stuff. It's more like. It looked like a bird's nest or hay at first. Yeah. But it was kind of like a fried noodle. It was crunchy, fried, stringy. Yeah. I, I I'll, I'm gonna tell you a warning for anybody listening to this. If you go into a market of a place that you really don't know, particularly in maybe a sort of developing country. And a guy hands, and you go up to some food-looking item, and a guy hands you something, and and he just sort of points to his mouth, and you put it in your mouth. It is at your own risk. Hmm. The great, you don't even know where his hand's been, because well, there, he didn't actually there's touch a reason it. that they eat with only. Well, how did he hand it to you? No, I sort of picked a bit. He sort of, he, I guess maybe he broke it off, but I picked it up. But either way, I'll tell you that, that is like the ultimate sort of. If you're like the food foodie. That is sort of the ultimate risk you're taking because you're going to go one way or the other. Like that was really tasty. It was actually kind of interesting and fun and it was a good experience, but it could have easily gone the other way. Yeah. And you also have to think like the reason that um, Indians tend to eat with one hand is because traditionally they would wipe themselves with the other one. Yeah. I don't know. What, it's funny. Cause toilet paper. Or I was thinking about that and I was like, I don't know what hand I touched it with. And I bet he was like horribly offended. Oh, yeah. But we keep both our hands clean all the time. Yes. To the extent possible. Um, so, we did eat a lot of salty snacks because we were sweating all the time because there wasn't a day that it didn't go well above 40. There was one day we were at 45 Celsius. Yeah. Um, the coolest I think we have experienced at night was around 37 Celsius. Yeah, it was pretty hot. But yeah. salty snacks are a good thing. And there's lots available. Lots of options like Sev. There's nuts. There's like fried peanuts with flavors. There's chips with all kinds of hot flavors and, and cool flavors and mostly spicy. Flavors. That's the one thing actually you should keep an eye out. Like if you go to if you go to Kentucky if you go to like Kentucky Fried Chicken or McDonald's, like your 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 burger was spicy. Kentucky Fried Chicken is spicy. Okay, what did we have at that Kentucky Fried Chicken? Oh, we had the chitza. The chitza. Oh, God. That was a. If I, I don't know, I don't know how available these are everywhere but a chitza is basically like two pieces of chicken i think it was two i don't know it was like a glob of chicken it was personal pan pizza sized sized. piece of chicken with cheese and toppings and like tomato sauce a little spicy because it's because it's india and so it's basically like a pizza but instead of crust you have kentucky fried chicken yeah that tasted good for the first half of it and that was quite enough and then after that it just was like a brick in my stomach yeah and i think we experienced a little sweaty time on the floor that night too maybe yeah yeah that was that was rough and the cookies there's lots of really good cookies there yeah there are some good cookies yeah Yeah. and if you like no sugar added cookies they have very good no sugar added cookies the other thing we should probably talk about if we're gonna get into like dessert is like indian desserts Barfi and stuff. Barfi, like there's all these like. You all remember? These, okay, the 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 black um, jamun. Yeah, the black jamun was really which good. Which your friend your friend calls gulab jamun sweet dink balls. Yes. So you ate sweet black dink balls. How do you feel about that? I have no comments. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty good. No, they were good. And the ladu. Ladu, ladu thing. Thanks, Jess. I think it was Jess, was Yeah, it was Jess gave us the name. We Jess, you know us. who you are. 
Yeah, if you're listening. <laughs> Could be. If you haven't fallen asleep yet, if you did, just even started listening. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, but there's um, one of the things I think you can safely do. You're going to find interesting flavors. I'm not. They're not as sweet as you might. It's weird because they're syrupy, but some of the stuff isn't as sweet. You get these like weird like sort of things that are all shiny with gold and silver. And, and some of the stuff didn't have the amount of syrup that you would expect from going to an Indian buffet and in, say, you know, Indianapolis or whatever. Yeah, yeah. One of the things about Indian buffets is you tend to find like their gulab jamun, which gulab jamun are like these little, I'm going to say they're like donut holes or timbits. Hmm. Size bits of dough, munchkins for munchkins, for, um, Dunkin' Donuts leader. We've translated every donut. I, th- uh, I think we have. Um, so, but basically, it's it's about that size, kind of doughy, but they tend to soak it in syrup, and it doesn't have a particular flavor. Sometimes it's a bit rose watery, but it's 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 just these little bite sized things, and you find them in Indian restaurants often in the buffet. But one of the things in India, as, as Allison was saying, is they don't tend to be sort of soaking in the syrup the same way. Yeah. It tends to be more sort of just it's got a syrup coating. Yeah, and it's that a sort of soaks inside. in a little sort bit. Sort of soaks in a little bit, but they're not like, you can't drink them. Like, I almost find biting to go, go up in, in North America, that's almost like eating a grape. You bite into it and you get like a burst of juice. You don't get that in India. You get like a moist, really moist cake mm-hmm. instead. It's lovely. It's very, oh, probably my favorite dessert. We didn't eat any jalebi in India. Yeah, I, we've had jalebi. We'll talk about that in our future episodes because I, I have eaten a, enough jalebi. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things. But there's one place in particular I like it, but it's not India, so we'll talk about that later. Yeah. But um, we just did. I don't think I even saw that much jalebi. I didn't see as much as I thought I would. Yeah. Like, you see it a lot in Indian restaurants, but it was there, but it wasn't that much. I saw paneer jalebi, which kind of interested me, but I didn't get it. Mm. And that's cheese jalebi, which, if you don't know what jalebi, we'll get into that later. We we'll get, probably so do a whole episode. You'll, you'll have to come back for another episode. Yes. Keep, we'll, keep listening until we get to jalebi. Yep. At least. Yeah. We'll maybe. do it last. <laughs> well, no, it won't be last because we're always going on adventures. Well, that's true. So I'm. I was to... I was disappointed in the yogurt. Yeah. The yogurt wasn't great. Yeah, it wasn't. There, there was, I mean, some good dairy products, some okay dairy products. Mm-hmm. Food. Dinner. I had cereal with hot milk one morning because there just wasn't any yeah. um, cold milk available. Yeah. You, and if you have breakfast, you're gonna get like noodles and. Like, Pakoras and yeah. Pakoras um, are like a samosas. deep fried, a lot of deep fried stuff. Yeah, you're gonna find a lot of fried foods. It's the flavoring is good. If you don't like spicy, you're in a lot of trouble. If you don't, if you like beef, if you're like a big red meat eater, you're gonna have a lot of trouble. <laughs> okay. No pork, no beef. Yeah. I don't there understand. Were, I saw a little bit of pork. Yeah, but not much. A little bit of lamb. They call it mutton. mutton. So I guess it was grown up lamb. Um, but chicken. It's just chicken. Chicken is chicken is, is the only meat, and a lot of restaurants are just veg. Yeah. The breads, the breads were very oh, good. Oh yeah, like the butter roti. Ro- anything with butter, really. Yeah. Butter naan, butter roti, any of those things. I like a good flatbread. I I love yeah. a good flatbread. Like, I, I mean, you sort of you, you think about maybe. Indian food as being naan and yeah. rice and curries. Um, but it's so much more than that, and like even amongst the breads, there's so many different breads. There was like the swirly. Yeah. Uh, flatbread and there's the I really preferred the roti the low end menu will have at least four different flatbreads for you yeah high end ones could have like dozens yeah so no it was it's really impressive yeah and and super yummy I was generally impressed with the and food there dal like the dal is also very good yeah yeah, which is basically some kind of lentil or pulse or bean or something yeah I tend to find sometimes it's a little bit spicy yeah but uh, in general I would say Indian food is probably if you like Indian food like at, a, at most restaurants, you'll probably enjoy this. Be a little careful because sanitation, you know, the way they take care of things is a little bit different. But the nice thing is like the curries and the stuff that's deep fried is generally a lot of that stuff is cooked out. Yeah. Basically, it's fun to experiment as long as it's cooked or peeled. As long as it's cooked or peeled. And if you're there for like we were there for about what, how many days? 13. 13 days. You're going to get sick once. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you don't, you know what, walk away with the bonus. But expect to get at least sick once. And tea is okay too, but just don't drink a glass of water unless you see it come out of the bottle. Yeah, yeah, things like water and avoid ice and. Uh, and av- if you if you like soda water, club soda, sparkling water, whatever they call it, plain soda there. There you go. There's there's like a different word for soda water in every country. Maybe we'll do a special episode of junk food all about the soda water. All about the soda water. That'd be the most boring episode ever. I don't know this one might come close. This will be this will find, this will be the second most boring episode. But yeah, if if you're adventurous, if you're not adventurous with food, really, I mean, India's a beautiful place and all, but 
you have to be adventurous to do it, even in general. Yeah, because like the fast food places, like we did, we tried McDonald's once, we tried Kentucky Fried Chicken once, and those were both disastrous. And Pizza Hut. And Pizza Hut, right? So in 13 days, we went to three sort of Western style fast food restaurants, and all to bad effect. Yes. All the best food we had was at like Indian curry and barbecue places. And literally, be willing to crawl through a kitchen that looks like that's outside after you push away the cow from the stove and to get to your seat and you if you're adventurous like if you can if you think you can handle that you're gonna have a great time yeah well and it's worth it even if you think you can't handle it like some of the food that you can get is totally worth it it is it's very good it's yummy but it's i mean we're it's, it's and so, like we didn't really go crazy on the sweets there so much but there there's a lot there it's it's um it's, I, I, I tried a few yeah, we tried a few, but not not as much as normally. I guess not. You know what? There really isn't that much. There was. It was available so. everywhere, yeah. though. I something. So. There was always something available. Yeah. But the traditional streets were a little harder to find. Uh, Shimla had a lot. Yeah. Shimla was the... Was the yeah. well, a few places... Was at least a lot of places would have gulab in or a version of that, and that's about it. And most restaurants had a few traditional few sweets. Yeah. You you mostly find lists of three or four things for dessert. A lot of them are the same. Yeah. Yeah, but you know they're good. Yeah, they're they're good. Yeah. And fast food there is definitely like the street food. Yeah. And try that out if you're there. Try it. It's amazing. Yeah, the, the Western chains did not did not. They didn't go well. hold up at all. So, I think that's probably about it. Anything else you want to add? No. It's a nice place. It's scary. Go to the mountains. The mountains eat, are beautiful. Eat Tibetan food. That's in the north. It's in the north. Um, we didn't go to the south, though, we didn't so go we can't say anything about no, the we south. No, I can't say. Well, we'll have, that'll maybe be another episode sometime when we get to go there. Yeah. But Best uh, street food, I would say, was in Jaipur. Hmm. Best butter chicken, Shimla, and Delhi. Yeah. Delhi, beautiful city. I, yeah. I was shocked. I was not expecting that. It was... Uh, big and green and well kept yeah some hairy areas but but that's this is where this is not a travel one it's about junk food so yeah but i would say india is worth a visit yeah it's it's an adventure it's not a relaxing vacation necessarily i disagree i think i relaxed a lot oh uh, maybe maybe in comparison to uh where we normally live but hmm I, I found it quite, uh, yeah, I mean, we did it well, too. We hired yeah. a, a car and driver for the entire time. So try the food. Which did not break the bank. Try the food, look around, yeah. enjoy it. And I think that's about it. Yeah. Well, thank you for listening to another episode of Junk Food on the Road starring uh, Chris and Allison. Um, next time we will talk about I think we said last time that we were going to talk about Germany next time and that this yeah, one's going to interrupt that so next time I think is Germany we've done Belgium I think we did Belgium okay so, so Germany Germany I think is next so um, thanks for listening and as always you can follow us at Candy Critic or on go to Twitter. on Twitter on Twitter or you can go to candycritic.org yep to follow our, you can find links to all our other social media and stuff like that there Chris just had the goofiest look on his face I was trying to get her to say it cleverly um, as always we generally post this on uh, YouTube so if you're listening to this on YouTube just hit the subscribe and you can follow all the junk food uh, podcasts including this one when it goes up regularly as well as you can uh, you will be subscribed to uh, Chris Why Would You Eat That which we have a series which is probably already the first episode might be online by the time this goes up Mm-hmm. Um, this is seriously it. the longest podcast we've ever done together mm-hmm. um, and had the least amount of stuff to say. <laughs> Thank you for interrupting my my ending. You're quite welcome. So I'm guessing this might be a thumbs down if you're reading on this on <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but that's up to you. Um, and uh, thanks for listening. And uh, Okay, just, okay I'm going to bed. She's going to bed. Bye, everybody. Candy me, salty dog. Candy me, salty dog. Candy me, salty dog. Well, if you won't be my candy man, I won't be your salty dog. Little red light, little green light. Little red light, little green light. 
little red light, little green light. The way you stop on the red and go on the green, don't you mess with Mr. In Between. Run and get the bucket, get your baby some beer. Run and get the bucket, get your baby some beer. Run and get the bucket, get your baby some beer. Run and get the bucket, get your baby some beer. Run and get the bucket, get your baby some beer. Well, I'm doing the thing in this God Almighty world. Keep my candy man here. Ooh, ooh. Doing a thing in this godlike world that will keep my candy man home. 